Alright, this video is for what we call a chi-squared test. Now let me, it's pretty new to us, let me kind of show you what a chi-squared test is. First off, it's spelled um, C-H-I squared. And the symbol we use for a chi-squared test is like a weird looking X squared. So that's the symbol for a chi-squared. Now the first thing you have to understand is don't be afraid of chi-squared. Don't think it's this crazy weird sounding thing, weird symbol. It is just like a z-score, a t-score. It is a score that we use in hypothesis test. Just like a t-score, just like a z-score. Okay? Um, let me first give you the formula for it because it's very different. You know, a t-score, a z-score is what you saw minus what you were supposed to see divided by standard error or standard deviation. A chi-squared value is a very different formula, and it's going to look really ugly, it's going to scare you, but trust me, it's not that bad. It is the sum of each observed value, I'll abbreviate that OBS, each observed value, minus the expected value, I'll abbreviate that EXP, all squared, divided by the expected value. Now, right now, that formula is going to be like... Don't even know what that understood. What does that mean? What is that? Trust me. Give me a couple moments here and an example, and it all makes sense to you. All right. First off, why do we even use chi square? What's the point of it? Well, it's used when we have categorical data. Okay. Everything we've been doing so far has been proportions or measurements of means. You know, the average length of a pickle, the average number of dreams you have at night. It's numbers. So now we're talking about a categorical variables. So some examples are colors. You know, what's your favorite color? Your answers are going to be words, not numbers. Um, what's your favorite beverage? Your answer is going to be Sprite or Dr. Pepper. It's not going to be a number. So this is used for categorical data. And we could either use one variables or... I uh, misspelled variables a little bit there. You can do one variables, or you could do it with two variables. So one variable is, hey, what's your favorite color? And that's it. And maybe a, you can do a two variable where you're saying, what's your favorite color and what's your gender? So you got almost a chart of favorite colors and gender, and you're trying to see a relationship between men and women and their favorite colors. So what we're going to kind of focus on today, for right now at least in this video, number 10, is we're going to focus on one variable um, categorical data. Okay, so this is where we count up how many blonde hair people there are. We count up how many brown hair people there are. So this is dealing with counts. All right. Um, so let's kind of uh, talk real quick about the conditions needed. And again, until we student do an example here, so we're going to do it in about a minute. Um, it's going to seem a little foreign, a little bit weird, but the conditions for a chi-squared test. The first condition is that you have counted data, so categorical data. Again, kind of what we already talked about. you got to make sure you have categorical data. This is not used for proportions. This is not used for means. The second thing we have to have here is we have to make sure we have a random sample. Just like we've always said, when you collect a sample of data, whether you're looking at anything with it, it needs to be a random sample for it to be unbiased and fair. And the third condition is that when we create these categories, like um, brown hair, black hair, blonde hair, red hair, we have to have five counts in each category. So five or more counts in each category. And um, again, still may sound a little bit strange, but it'll come um, clear here soon. Okay, so um, once again, chi-squared is a test. It's just like a proportion test or a um, means test. It's trying to say, hey, here's what we expect. That would be the null, and what's the alternative? And that's something else, okay? Uh, maybe it's we think it's different or so forth. And you're going to see some people end up thinking chi-squared tests are actually a little bit easier. So let's just jump into an example, and I can explain a little bit better what this all is through an example. So here's our first example here. A vending machine for beverages has five different choices. The salesman for the machine says that the types of beverages are all equally favored among people. Tim wonders if this is true, so he observes what people get out of the machine and records results in the table below. Is the salesman correct? So again, we have categorical data. What drink are you getting? Coke, Pepsi, Sprite, Dr. Pepper, iced tea. Not numbers. We have numbers that represent the counts of these things, but it's not an average length of something or... Um, it's not the um, proportion of the number of people that um, are illiterate, you know, whatever. 
So the first thing we need here is a null hypothesis. And I'm going to change my color back to green here. Okay, null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. I like that green color for what I do, so I'll write over top of that. So the null hypothesis, again, you use words here, actually, in the chi-square test, because the null hypothesis is what the manager says. The manager said that all drinks are equally favored. So I'm going to put drinks are equally favored. And the cool thing about this is that you use the words in the problem. You know, the, the null hypothesis is somewhere in the problem. You just got to find it. So drinks are equally favored. And the alternative is simply the opposite of that, which would be drinks are not equally favored. And that's exactly what um, Tim is wondering. He's wondering if maybe this is not true. So um, we have a null that the drinks are equally favored, just like the salesman said. The alternative is that it's not true. So the second thing, that was the first thing we need. The second thing we need is our conditions. Okay, let me just run through them one more time with you. We have to have a random sample, and you have to assume that the people that are buying these things out of the machines are doing so randomly. And we have to make sure that we have categorical data. And we do have categorical data. We've got Coke, Pepsi, Sprite, Dr. Pepper, iced tea. Those are not numbers. Those are categories. And the next item we have to have is we have to make sure there's five counts in each category. And we clearly have that. We have enough counts in every single category. So now we need the actual work here. Remember, the chi-squared formula is all about what we observed versus what's expected. So these are all observations. The frequency is just the number of. These are what Tim observed. So those are all the observations. And if you count these up, that is a grand total of 247 total observations. So now we define the expected values. And the expected values are actually really, really easy to find. The expected is based on the null. The null is that it's true, that they're all equally favored. So if you take 247 and divide it by 5, we should have all of these being equal. So 247 divided by 5 is 49.5 is the expected value for Coke, Pepsi, Sprite, Dr. Pepper, and iced tea. Remember, the salesman said they're equally favored, so we would expect they would all be equal, and that's just taking the total divided by the five categories. So now to find the chi-squared, your chi-squared values are using the formula. Now remember the formula is observed, 52, minus expected, 49.5, quantity squared, divided by the 49.5 expected. And if you do that, I'll give you a chance to try that out. It's 52 minus 49.5. Get a result. Square it. Divide by 49.5, and you get 0.1368. And you have to do this for all of these. Pepsi, observed 63 minus expected 49.5. Squared, divided by 49.5. You get 0.2753. Sprite, 25 minus 49.5 squared, divided by the expected 49.5 you get 12.0518. Dr. Pepper, do the same thing. Observed, minus expected. Squared, divided by the expected. 1.8656. One more to go here. Ice tea, observed 48. Divided by the, ex or, I'm sorry, subtract the expected 49.5. Square it and divide it by the expected 49.5. And we get 0.0397. Now, remember, the chi-squared value is the sum. We use that sigma symbol, the sum of all of these. So the total, final, altogether chi-squared value is the sum of all these. Just add them all together. You get 14. 0.3692. Now, this is just like a T-score or a Z-score. However, Z-score, T-score, 14.3692 is just huge. But the neat thing about chi-squared values is chi-squared is um, a skewed graph, okay? So it's skewed like this, okay? It's a really bad drawing. But anyway, so 14.3692, we're going to find out, is pretty high, but it's not overly high based on um, the chi-square, because it is a skewed method. So what we do is we go to our calculator, because we need a p-value, just like any other test. To get that p-value, you're going to do what's a chi-squared CDF, and you'll find it almost um, two spots underneath a t-CDF. We're going to go from 14.3692, comma, 99. Now, some people tell you to use 999, only because that tail goes way out there with skewed data. 
but usually it doesn't really matter to be quite honest with you but we could do the 999 to be safe but it's okay if you probably do 99 and you need the last thing you need degrees of freedom degrees of freedom is really easy it's just how many categories you have minus one so I got one coke Pepsi Sprite Dr. Pepper iced tea five categories minus one is four degrees of freedom so this is going to give you our p-value and it is 0 0.0062 and we're going to think about that p-value just like we always have thought about in the past and um, that is a very low p-value and what do we do with very low p-values we reject the null and we go with the alternative so obviously the drinks are not equally favored. So we would go with our step four, the conclusion, reject the null. Now let me explain this one more time. We don't expect to always have these values. No one's saying, the salesman's not saying that they're all going to be exactly the same all the time. We allow for variance. I mean, that's part of life. Everything varies. But how much are we allowed to vary? For example, 52 is not that far away from 49.5, hence a small chi-squared value. Look at 48. That is very close to the expected, not a very big chi-squared value. So what flavor is actually really probably making Tim wonder here if this is true about the flavors being equal? And that's Sprite. Look at Sprite, 25, and it was supposed to be 49.5. That was the biggest chi-squared individual value we had. So Sprite is probably what's throwing all these numbers off and making the salesman's claim of all equally favored false. So we're going to reject the null, and we're going to go with the alternative that the drinks are obviously not equally favored. So that's a quick run-through for how to do chi-squared. It's actually not that difficult once you get the idea. Calculating the value seems confusing, but remember, all you got to do is find your expected, then it's observed minus expected, squared, divided by your expected. Add all those together, and you get your chi-squared, just like you'd get a T-score or a Z-score.